Um, my name is Philip Boucher Hayes. Uh, I'm a, a journalist with RTU. The reason that I'm here is about a year and a half ago, uh, I made a television program about food waste. Uh, it didn't work, and that's why <laughs> we're all here now. Uh, we followed a, a very interesting EPA project uh, in Kilorglin uh, and tried to translate the lessons learned there nationally. Now, I will admit that I'm probably somewhat a victim of my own limited thinking because when I first approached the issue of food waste, I thought what we're talking about here is a saving of 700 to 1,000 euro per household, a bit more for small businesses, restaurants, food producers and the like if they just adhere to a couple of basic principles. The thing is, I was reading just the other day the United Nations FAO report on food waste recently and this is a truly, truly shocking figure. Globally, we generate 2.8 trillion of these, 2.83 billion. I mean, in a country that we're used to 3 trillion, I mean, used to dealing with telephone number figures at this stage, that is still a figure that is quite hard to get your head around. But the easiest way to do that is to think of it as if all of that, if that three trillion of food waste from households, food loss from farmers and suppliers that never actually makes it to market, if all of that food could be converted to more useful purposes, you could feed three billion people. And just right now in Peru, in Lima, we are getting to the business end of the climate conference, where all of the ministers and heads of state have uh, shipped into town to presumably once again fail to agree to set any meaningful targets and li national limits and uh, we'll move on to hopefully doing a little bit better in Paris. But this strikes me as one of the most pressing issues on that front. People are not going to be asking us, or sorry, our grandchildren are not going to be asking us 40 years from now when it comes to food waste, oh, that half a billion euro a year that you saved uh, nationally, if we did that for 68 years, we'd pay off the Anglo debt. That'd be great, wouldn't it? Uh, not going to be asking us about what we did to set Ireland on the path to fiscal restitute, but what we did to save the planet. And food waste, food waste, if it was a country, would be the third largest emitter of greenhouse gases globally. Uh, food waste has to be seen as an issue of its time and not the moment. And that is why, and there will be more people joining us later on, that is why you people as opinion formers, opinion leaders, market shapers, uh, are, I'm really glad looking through the guest list to see so many of you here today. Uh, I'm not gonna run through what the program is just right now. I'm gonna get straight on because we're running behind time. Uh, we're introducing the first speaker who is somebody who since I first met her about Two and, a half, two and a half years ago, every single time I meet her, she never fails to leave me kind of open-mouthed or slack-jawed with some new figure or some new absolutely stunning area of waste and oversight in Irish society. Uh, she's going to do that, a little bit of that, but she's also going to talk to us about the targets for what we hopefully can achieve over the course of the next 10, 11 years. So can I introduce to you, please, Odile LeBlanc from the EPA. Thanks, Philip. Morning, everybody. Um, as Philip said, my name is Odile LeBlanc, and I think I've been in touch with most of you by email through organizing this conference. Um, I've been working in the area of food waste prevention and resource efficiency for a number of years and over these years my work has brought me into contact with an awful lot of people. It's actually incredible the amount of people out there who care about the issue of food waste and who are working trying to tackle the issue of food waste. And this is where the idea came for today. I just thought it would be great if we could kind of harness this gathering momentum and get everybody together, um, you know, including all actors along the food chain. And if we could somehow just discuss the issues and the challenges and somehow explore ideas for collective solutions. I think, you know, a lot of people are trying to do things in their own, in their own worlds, in their own area. And perhaps we could, you know, increase the momentum a little bit by all working together. 
Um, as well as the case studies, though, today is about discussion, so please take part. It's not about pointing fingers at anybody. It's the idea is to put all the issues, challenges out there and explore ideas to solve these challenges and hopefully identify some next steps along the way. So to begin with, I'm just going to um, set the scene a little bit and put in a bit of context. This is a, a, a title I use, I use regularly because I think you know, it really highlights this that you know, on the one hand, we're talking about increasing food production, um, but there's currently huge quantities of food being wasted and it, it, this, is, this is the paradox that we need to solve. At a, um, the European Union did a study recently and excluding agriculture, they found that over 60% of food is wasted in the post-consumer phase of the life cycle of, of food. I do think it is important to acknowledge though that sometimes food waste, um, where the food waste actually occurs can be misleading because food can be passed up and down the food chain as well. And we have, this area in particular is an area where we've been focusing on where I've you know, met people who are working, working in, in the whole area from sort of the distribution down to food services and householders. Uh, but there's also you know, a requirement for resource efficiency at the earlier stages of the, of the food chain. I'd just like to point out, you know, there is some work going on um, in the area of making food production more resource efficient and um, Andrew Mullins from Board B is going to talk a bit um, about their Origin Green programme. But I did also want to highlight a programme that um, we've been running in the EPA in conjunction with the Irish Farmers Association called Smart Farming. And this is uh, getting farmers to look at the resources and the inputs that they put into their farm and become more resource efficient. And some of the, the savings that they're making on their farm is quite astonishing. Um, these farmers are usually part of discussion groups, so they work together with their peers and they're sharing ideas with each other and even just things like you know, nutrient management and when not to fertilise the soil. They were actually wasting a lot of money unnecessarily fertilising their soil. So I think this, this programme is um, something that we will, we will watch with interest in. This is um, the European Roadmap for Resource Efficiency which was written in 2011. And they set this target, um, by 2020, um, we should have a 50% reduction in the disposal of edible food. Now, since then, this target has been changed. The European Parliament came up with a 50% reduction by 2025, and currently the target is a 30% reduction by 2025. This is quite an ambitious target. Um, it's still got the details still have to be worked out. Um, nobody's sure what the baseline year is for this, or um, whether countries who've already been doing work on food waste uh, prevention will have a different baseline year. So I suppose it's just to establish that it, food waste is a big issue. It's been seen as an issue at European level, and it's certainly something that they expect to see action taken on. In relation to food waste in Ireland, well, from an early stage, we have had the responsibility to reduce um, organic waste going to landfill. So um, a national strategy on biodegradable waste was written back in 2006, I think it was. And this set out ambitions for just uh, taking action to reduce the amount of um, organic waste that was going to landfill. It involved things like, so I suppose, highlights would be the recent uh, food waste regulations that require separate collection, um, so food um, food waste producers, from kitchens, canteens that are required to separate their food waste and householders are also required to do that and that's being rolled out um, over this year and next year. Um, and what we've actually found is this, this requirement to separate food waste has actually been um, a big driver in the, in the requirement to prevent food waste. A lot of people when they actually see what they're throwing away are quite shocked and they kind of want to take action about it. So I think, you know, it's certainly it's, it's a key move in, in, the, in the direction of getting people to become more aware, aware of it. So what do we know about food waste in Ireland? Well, we don't have a huge amount of data. What we do know is over a million tonnes of food waste is, reg is wasted in Ireland every year. It's broken down roughly in um, this kind of way. So you can see that food waste from kind of commerce and households actually accounts for about 60% of the food wasted. And then we have the um, remainder for production. This doesn't include food waste um, or food losses from agriculture, which is an area that we don't really know a huge amount about. What we also know is that roughly about 60% of food waste is avoidable. That is things like you know plate scrapings, leftovers, food that's gone off and passed its, its uh, use-by date. 
We also have 20% um, that's potentially avoidable, and these are things that I suppose are more related to people's eating habits. It could be things like, you know, bread crusts, potato skins, whether they peel their vegetables. And then we also have 20% that is unavoidable, so, you know, there's always going to be some element of food waste. We know that these are figures that come from um, Unilever Food Solutions, who do work in the hospitality sector in Ireland. And in Ireland, restaurants lose over 125 million euro a year by throwing food away. Um, some studies that were done in um, the catering sector by um, Niall O'Connor in Monaghan County Council and some of the work we have been doing in um, other parts of the country established that a tonne of food waste is worth roughly €2,000, or that's roughly about two, um, two €2 per kilogram. So that kind of helps put a cost on what people are throwing away, and it certainly helps focus the mind in different organisations that we work with when they suddenly realise the cost of what they're throwing away. It does take into account the cost to, um, to buy and store and cook the ingredients, as well as the cost then for waste management when uh, that is taken away. So the challenges, um, I just, I suppose I threw down some ideas. I know there's more and hopefully we'll hear more about those today. But obviously the agri-food sector is, an import, is important to Ireland's economic recovery and it does need to um, increase its planning on um, increasing production. So the challenge from that point of view is ensuring that food production is resource efficient. And I know Andrew is going to talk a bit about that later on. Um, we have over half a million tonnes of organic waste is generated by households and commercial businesses, and most of that is avoidable. But we do also need to be aware that food waste can move up and down the food supply chain. Um, we do, through the activities that we have been doing and others have been doing in relation to preventing food waste, the key to that is actually influencing um, uh, people's behaviours and consumption um, and production behaviours. This isn't, a, isn't an easy task, trying to get people to change what they've always done, why they've always done. Even Philip mentioned this morning that, you know, practice what we preach, it's something that we know we should be doing, but what actually takes us to the next stage where we actually do what we should be doing. And for us, that is, that is a challenge. So I think, you know, the more, the more, um, the easier it is for people to make the right choices, for people to change their behaviour, to want to change their behaviour, uh, the more chance we have of success. And I think there's a role for every step along the, the supply chain to um, work in that area. And the other thing is to mention that it's not always about expensive technological changes. A lot of the behaviour change, certainly in the realm of the, the households, just involves them doing something slightly differently. And I think, you know, there can be a bit of a, there, obviously there, um, for other areas in the supply chain, there could be technological solutions, like packaging, you know, improved storage methods, that kind of thing. And maybe we hope we'll discuss that kind of thing today. Um, so I suppose I just wanted to kick things off by putting that out there, but I'm sure all of you have your own ideas and thoughts. So I just urge you yet again, please do take part in the discussion. That's, we want this to be all about discussion. So please take part. And that's me. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.